October Halloween is approaching, do you know what this means? We need to talk about telomeres. I should back up. Many of the traditional Halloween misfits are undead. Frankenstein, zombies, mummies. I can't help you there. But some of these seasonal stories revolve around supposed immortality. Vampires, Merlin, Nicholas Flamel, lobsters. Okay, I swear I haven't lost my mind, and yes, you heard me right. I'm talking about the deep, dark legends surrounding immortal lobsters. Now sure, this kind of fabled immortality isn't real. Eventually, every biological system will break down. But there are some organisms that live for a surprisingly long time. Some trees, like the giant sequoias, can live to be thousands of years old. Lobsters live for an estimated 100 years, with some scientists estimating that they could live even longer, potentially hundreds of years, if they weren't injured, sick, or eaten. So what do giant sequoias and long-lived lobsters have in common? Long telomeres and active telomerase. Now every time our DNA replicates, it loses just a little bit of the end of the DNA strand in the process. Over time, this could lead to a loss of important genetic information. So, biology has developed telomeres, which are repeated sequences of DNA at the ends of your chromosomes. These sequences can be repeated hundreds to thousands of times, and they hold no genetic information. They act as sort of buffer zones at the ends of your DNA. You lose a little bit of the telomere each time your cell replicates, but it's okay because there's nothing important there anyways. But eventually, a cell will run through the ends of its telomeres and start to lose important DNA. An enzyme known as telomerase can come in and rebuild the telomeres, replenishing this buffer zone. In the human body, telomerase is active in cells that have to divide very often, so in things like germ cells and stem cells and white blood cells. But in most of your cells, telomerase activity was shut off during early development. This means that eventually, your cells will stop dividing. Much of the original research on telomerase was done in an organism known as Tetrahymena thermophila, which is fun to say. It's a single-celled protozoa, and it has telomeres like, whoa. In a lab environment, given enough food and happy growing conditions, the telomerase activity in this organism is so good that it will keep the DNA stable pretty much indefinitely, making the cell culture effectively immortal. So getting back to the beginning, scientists have looked at the telomeres of thousand-year-old trees and long-lived lobsters. One sequoia study supported the hypothesis that increased telomere length and telomerase activity contributes to the long lifespan of those trees. A lobster study found high telomerase activity in all lobster organs and concluded that telomerase activation maintains long-term cell proliferation capacity. Put together with a lot of similar studies, there's starting to be a good body of evidence that long telomeres and high telomerase activity can help lead to longevity. Silly Ponce de Leon. The fountain of youth wasn't in Florida. It was at the tips of your own DNA. Go forth, do science. So longevity is just the tip of the telomere iceberg, so if you thought this video was cool, you can subscribe for future videos on telomeres and other fun, cool science, and you should also check out a link in the description box below for a series of video lectures by Elizabeth Blackburn, who won the Nobel Prize for her work in telomeres, because she gives a great series of lectures and she goes into really cool detail and does a much better job than I can, because while I am many things, I am not a Nobel Prize winner. So you should check those out below.